What's up, Trash Talkers? Here we are with your second episode of The Fifth Principle of Patrolling. Uh, as you know from the last show, The Fifth oh, Principle is Common Sense. And again... Say it again ahead. for the people in the back that couldn't hear you. Common Sense. Oh, now, so like, just shit you should know. Cool. Right, just shit you should know. And I mean, we, Common Sense wasn't we, so common anymore. Because True. where you go, that's why we have you here. Where you go <laughs> depends on what's common, and we covered that last show. To where, you know, if you're in Alabama, there's certain things that are common there that somebody from Wisconsin is like, "What the fuck is that?" All right, so yeah, like you can't use a uh, 12 inch diameter pipe in your well to pull well water off. Goes that are that are a second cousin is pretty pipe, much buddy. not family. All right, so that there's yeah, there's all never, kinds of yeah. things like that. But Here's with, the rule with in Alabama, Nick, if you've missed more than two family reunions in a row, fair game. You're not family anymore. <laughs> so with us, as you've been hearing talk already, is Buddy Beckwith. Uh, he does the honesty cap on the Veteran Trash Talk Hour. He has still yet to create his own Facebook page. That I do we, have my own Facebook page. But, I just don't know how to link it. Okay, so as soon as he sense. links it, we'll get you hooked up because he's one of the most talented guys on the show. He doesn't really know it, but he is. Uh, and then we have old Jorge or George, depending on uh, what area of the country he's in, Nunez, otherwise known as Nunu. All right, and Nunu was an RI with me in Florida, so he understands the five principles of patrolling, and he definitely understands the fifth principle of patrolling and he also was a the typical i'm gonna get out of the army with no fucking idea what i'm gonna do and so he he worked as a car salesman because that's what you do that's what every first sergeant warns you about they're like don't get out you're just gonna sell cars right and you're like oh no first i'm taking over the world and it's like no 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 you sold cars okay you literally went right down that road um but now you're driving trucks which uh, brings in Buku dollars. Uh, let's go, Brandon. Hashtag, let's go, Brandon. Uh, thanks thanks yeah, to- uh, Unless you're buying diesel fuel at this point. Right. Are you paying for your own fuel? Uh, yeah, but I only pay a dollar, no matter what the uh, price is. Okay. So, uh, Nunu, say hi to the audience. Uh, there, We are not live. We are recording. So, you can be as dumb as you want, and I can either edit it or keep it in and make fun of you. So, say hi. Say what, say what you're doing. Why are you on this show? Yeah. Fifth principle. I lost, I lost uh, the, I lost all my dumbness when I got out of the military. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's good to be on the show. It's good to see Nick and uh, this new guy with the uh, hairy mustache. Keep the kids away. Sweet. I got, you know what? I like that new guy with the hairy mustache. That's that's me. <laughs> so, uh, well, like we talked about last week, was you know. We have we're having trouble understanding the common sense behind how the unvaccinated are hurting the vaccinated. It it, it literally makes no sense. Okay, and so again, we're not anti-vaxxers. We're not anything like that. We just want to know where's the logic, or even the math, to back that statement up. Because remember, the two languages of proof are math and logic. It's two, two thumbs up, okay? Now, logic, as we like to say in the ranger world, is common sense, all right? That's the fifth principle of patrolling. Why are you attacking up that hill? Well, well, uh, you know, it just seemed like a good idea. Because well, you... I'm a Navy SEAL, and because yeah. I'm a Navy SEAL, I throw myself down mountains so I can get to some water because that's the best place. Right. Yeah. And now yeah. maybe now maybe maybe that Ranger student says, Well, Sarge, that's the only way we can go. And it's like, oh, okay. So what are you doing to mitigate all this stuff? And then now you have a conversation. Or the guy's just an idiot. And then he gets a no-go because he's a fucking idiot. And and that's uh, where he got the, screwed by the RI. That's he got screwed by the RI. Right? Maybe yeah, the, the RI was stupid. A, the, the one guy that's ranger qualified but never was an RI. This guy will tell you, you just get screwed by the RI. It's, it's, it's RI roulette. You that's can, you can, you can get, you can get screwed by RIs. That's a fact um, for sure. Because at, when I was the primary instructor, when Nunu was one of my underlings, right? Like you would see counselings for Ranger students where you're like, 
I'm not sure this kid should have got a no go. Um, and now I have to talk to him because this is he was perfect in Derby, perfect in mountains, and he's got three no goes. All right, in Florida, and two of them from the same RI, and you know one of them from one of the dumb RIs, and it's like, sorry, bro, like uh, good luck next class. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Florida's a and nice place to Gator be. Lounge. Yeah, go to the Gator Lounge and buy like four dollar cookies. All right, because we're, yeah. we're we're using that to pay for our golf outings. All right, that was legal. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> but it, it is what it is, um, buddy. What's not making sense to you recently? Let's start with you, because I can cover something that's been covered nationwide that you didn't weren't paying any attention to. I'll cover that later. No. Oh, but, well, um, are you going to talk about Aaron Rodgers? I am going to talk about Aaron Rodgers a little bit because it's disgusting. But uh, do you want me to go first, or do you want? Because I don't you, know him. No, yeah. I don't, you know what? I'm just going to go straight gonna, into it. You're going to send it. Uh, yeah. Since Nunu was a uh, car salesman, and uh, what we were, what we were, here's the common sense question. So I go down because I want to buy myself a snazzy new ride, and I take my less snazzier ride into the uh, the car dealership. And some slick bearded used to be RI comes up to me and tells me that, like, you know, I can I can sell you a car. I was in the army too. I used to be an RI. I got you, homie. Like and he, was, and he was in regiment, so he's a real ranger. Oh <laughs> he's a real <laughs> yeah. ranger. He's not just a qualified guy, he's yeah. real life. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then he goes, up. go ahead. I was, uh, I wasn't, I call you guys the uh, 25 percenters. You didn't have the intestinal fortitude to acquire the uh, 75th to complete the 100 percent U.S. Army Ranger. What the one yeah, week of right. the one, went the, to, the one uh, week of we, land nav you guys do to become got, rangers? We got selected to be in the uh, second battalion, 505th parachute infantry, the tip of the spear. I don't know if you've ever been there before. It's right on the very top. Yeah, it's in the 82nd. It's in the division. I don't know if right. you've heard yeah. of the division. It's, it's the division. All you have is a. You just have a regiment. Yeah, we yeah. have a whole division. And I don't know if you've read the first couple pages of the uh, that little handbook they hand out, but I'm pretty sure that regiment came from the division. Not a huge deal. That's where that and the 25th infantry too. They took it, they took a battalion from the 25th infantry as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But mostly the division. But hey, whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever. it's okay. They're it's they're, better than, he's they're better than they're better. He's better than you. I'm not Buddy, he's better than you. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Anywho. Now I go down to the car dealership and I, I start talking to you and uh, and I go, hey, what's the trade-in value for my for my snazzy little uh, little Nissan Pulsar or whatever the fuck I'm trading in? And you go, well, that the trade-in value is two thousand dollars. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I go find myself a nice little Honda, and I'm like, hey, what is the value of this? And you're like, well. The retail value is ten thousand dollars, so the difference is eight thousand dollars, and that's what you owe us. Here's my question, and here's what's not jiving with my <laughs> common sense brain: Why the fuck are you paying trade and I'm paying retail if we're trading? That's like being in like mountains and being like, <laughs> "Yo, got peanut butter, want cheese," and the guy's like, "Yeah, I got cheese." But it's gonna cost you peanut butter and crackers. Like this is not how trades work, homie. Like it's a it's fair. It's like straight up. Like we're doing a straight up tradesy. Like tradesy. That's how yeah, we're doing if it. If you traded in Ranger School like you do for cars, the way that car dealerships do it is, is I'm offering you peanut butter, and you're like, uh, yeah, that's gonna like. Yeah. You got to owe me. Like, I don't want your. I don't. I I don't really want your peanut butter, but, but I'm I'll, gonna end up taking your peanut butter. And your crackers, and, and then probably you, your then you owe meal. me an entire MRE. Yeah, I said, wait a minute, but I, I just gave you the, I just gave you the peanut butter. Yeah, like, like, I'm gonna like, give, like, I'm gonna give my MRE to somebody else for two fucking MREs. And how does it turn? Oh, how do I owe great eight grand all of a sudden? How are you the only person <laughs> that's leaving Ranger School fat as fuck? That's yeah. what I want. That's car dealer is a car In dealer. This analogy. How are you? How are we not trading fairsies? And then, how did, no how did, and then after you answer that, Nunu, how would you sleep at night ripping off all these young rangers? First of all, I never uh, ripped off anybody. They, uh, trust me, there were multiple times when I sat there and I told them, I was like, I would not sign this paper right now if I 
wrong with you. Is that why you don't work there anymore? Probably (laughs) because I was too fucking honest. Yeah. And I'll give, I've got a couple examples of that, but basically, uh, yeah, the car, I've only seen it one time where the dealership took a hit on a vehicle to sell another vehicle and they probably got their money back anyways from selling the extended warranties and all the other shit they try to get you to, um, try to get you to buy, but the car dealership always going to make money on both ends either, either way. So, yeah, so what are what are the odds if you go into say a car dealership and you're like, hey, like, like okay, like you got the trade in value. I got I got Kelly Blue Book on my smartphone at this point. Um, the trade in value of this car is six thousand dollars and not ten thousand dollars. So let's do six because that's what the trade in value is, and I'm trading a car for for this car. What what are the odds that goes over? It's not. They're <laughs> <laughs> they'll never they're not they're not gonna they're not gonna give you that um but see how that doesn't like i don't get it i just don't get it doesn't make you sense have to make to it me. make sense it's not common yeah, sense like, to us I, why does it why, why is that the thing like here's what's gonna you're happen. the bad guy no right now is, until you make it make sense make it make sense. you know when <laughs> yeah. you go in and you're like hey here's my here's my trade-in and the guy's like yeah okay let me take your keys i'm gonna go hand it to my manager the guy has been doing this for 20 years and that guy takes it for a test drive so all that guy is doing is within five, 10 minutes, he can pinpoint everything that's wrong with that car. So once he does that, that trade-in value that you just think is $6,000, now that trade-in value is going to be $4,000. And they're like, nah, we can knock it down to 35 and we can resell it for five. Right. And then here's wow. here's the common sense that people don't understand when you're dealing with a business. And uh, we get it as well here at Veteran Trash Talk when people want like discounts. And it's like, you do know that we donate the majority of our proceeds. And then I go, after that, we make like a dollar a shirt. So now you want me to give you a discount. It's like, for what? You know? And so these dealerships, they have to resell these cars. So you watch it on, what's that show? American Pickers? Where that guy goes in the garage and he's like, yeah, uh, this glass right here, um, I love it. I'll give you $10 for it. He's like, that's at least worth 20. He's like, I know. He's like, but I have to sell it. <laughs> so he's like, if I, <laughs> if you give, if I pay you 20 for it, I make nothing. So that should be able to make some sense. Nope. No, nope. And here's why really? it doesn't make sense. <sighs> because I'm Alabama. not fucking trading. I'm not fucking trading. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it straight up, right? I.e. retail, I'm trading. So if I go in with my own shitty coffee cup and I'm like, hey, I've got this shitty coffee cup that's worth $5 and you've got this cup that's worth fucking $5 and we just trade these and I give you five bucks. Well, Boom. so you're saying you want to trade so a shitty mean? car for a newer car and get the same price. No, I just, why are we both getting trade-in value? Like, why am I, why am I paying retail and you're paying trade? Okay, so. Like, if we're, if we're trading, then we're both trading. Like, that's how trades work. Right. I don't pay retail and you pay me trade. Like, I pay trade, you pay trade, and then I pay the difference between the fucking better car and the shittier car. So, again, to make sense of your question, it's not what's the value of the car the dealership is selling no. it's what's if they were going to offer a trade-in for that car what right. would they offer for that car correct and then no no answer that man why are you guys ripping people off why are you ripping people yeah. off Nudu? what's fuck i'm back on buddy's side and, now uh, i was on your you side now i'm back on buddies <laughs> so when <laughs> that happens is they they already gave whoever traded in that car <laughs> that trade in value or whatever you want to call it. So if they came in and they're now selling that car for $10,000, they probably gave them about six or seven. For so what you're explaining to buddy from Alabama is basic economics. Uh, it's not basic economics. Cause how did the car, I don't know. New news heads going up and down. New news heads going up and down. A little, um, a little bit. So. <laughs> I, know, I know economics don't really uh, exist down there in Alabama, but. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Somebody that's calling from like new Orleans. I don't, I don't think you get that. You don't even, you people don't even understand that. What do you mean, you people? Ocean. 
Uh, I mean, you people, you New New Orleans. You don't understand that the ocean is 20 feet above your head, and then you're like, the fucking levee, bro. Let's let's build let's some buildings build down here. here. Yeah, you know what we need to do? <laughs> Man, let's build a big old ditch and then we'll build shit in the where the puddle would have been if it wouldn't have been a ditch then boom common sense common sense hit it there so uh, we don't um, do that in alabama in alabama uh, we build up and then we build on top of the hill we built yeah yeah it's a trash hill but uh <laughs> Hey, don't matter what's underneath it. <laughs> what's with the methane? Uh, rate, what's with the methane ratings in around your area? I don't know. Um, uh, methane ratings are high anyway. We fart a lot. Yeah, you know it's hard. It's hard to bring up common sense issues today because of what dominates the media, right? And so the media is dominated by COVID. But something actually hit the wire the other day that caught me. All right. And I got into an argument with old Vlad from CBS mornings. Uh, he was, uh, I believe he was a Naval officer. I'm trying to get him on the show, but he does, he does interact with uh, veteran trash talk on Twitter. So uh, it's, it, it, it's fun, but the issue of women volleyball players. Okay. So three men on here. So if, if the woke, the woke cancel culture doesn't give a shit what we think about women because we're white males. Well, Jorge's Hispanic, but that's white because uh, no, no, Spanish. No, no, no. White, white today. Border patrols all around. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I would like to just go ahead before you start and say that I am a fan of women volleyball players, and right. I think that they are great people, and I like that they need the shorts that they need in order to play their sport. Well, see now, buddy, Delightful. just buddy. That's a great lead in because that's okay, exactly equal to football player. Pick. That's exactly what the Norwegian national team. All right. Filed a suit against the Olympic committee, the IOC and said, why are the rules for men? Swimming, swimming suits and tank tops. All right which is very, is very vague. Like they could either wear a speedo or they could wear board shorts, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a swimming suit, but for women, it is required for them to wear tight fitting clothing. All right. It's literally, it it's, it's, it's literally in the rules. Say, now, it might exactly. have something to do with the fact that they wanted funding for their sport and they do the sex though. Exactly. Exactly. So you know who you know who doesn't fail the fifth the fifth principle of patrolling is marketers. Okay, mm -hmm. big time marketers understand exactly what's going on in this world. They will never fail you. Otherwise, they'd be out of a job. All right. Wow. Now they realize that no the the majority of sports watchers, the people who sit down and actually watch Olympics, are men. OK, now women and other men who don't enjoy sports will watch certain events. All right. But the people who actually sit down and watch an entire golf round. All right. Are men, people who watch a marathon. It's just some guy who enjoys sports. OK. And he enjoys watching the athleticism and the competition. Now, that being said. Without, um, we're not being sexist here, even though the woke will already, the woke's already not listening to us because we're men, so it doesn't matter. All right. We appreciate athleticism. We appreciate high flying, you know, fast runners, uh, guys who can throw us some spear real fucking far, like the javelin throw, right? Like, 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 like we appreciate that as athletes. Something that we get turned off on or bored is like, let's just say women's basketball. Okay. I, uh, I would like to say that um, I I don't prefer women's basketball, but women's basketball at this point is almost easier to watch than men's basketball just because there's less sloppy. Sure, you're going into a different arena there. Get that arena I'm basketball? Did you get like it? Like I got um, you. Uh, yeah, you're mad. Nice so, yeah, like a good pun. Um, so the marketers are like, how do we get the largest demographic of people who watch sports just because it's sports to watch women's volleyball. Okay. They figured it out. They said, don't wear any clothes. 
All right. And all these dudes will little as possible. Right. And no, it's so not, it's not, but it's not just that either, right? Just common sense. Like, okay, you're wearing baggy shorts and then you go to like sprint up to get a ball and your shorts get caught on your knee and or fall down. Because oh, so now it's a safety thing. Right, 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 right. So Buddy, yeah, Buddy's yeah. a humanitarian that believes in the safety of these women. So that the, 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 the women, the women need to be wearing bikinis because we don't want them to fall. Um, yeah, that was, that, that's ahead, what it is. My, you know what? I don't want to, <laughs> I, I, would, I would be remiss if I didn't throw my honesty cap on here for a second and say that I Do think it. that everybody, everybody ought to worry about the safety of a six foot two. Norwegian man. women. Norwegian yeah. Yeah. Flash American <laughs> volleyball player that does a lot of squatting and jumping. Right. So athletic and not unattractive. Like I think we should all worry about them. Right. And then again, if you're and if you're an athlete, chances are you're somewhat attractive. All right. Because you take care of yourself. And if you're an Olympic athlete, like of that caliber, especially in a sport that requires movement, you're probably in pretty good shape. Just saying. Um like, like uh, I want to say uh, Tim Sadler, he was an Olympic athlete. Uh, that guy, uh, he raped some, he wanted to rape some girls, but uh, we won't talk about him right now. Um, yeah, I was once an Olympic athlete too. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. Yeah. We're tight or close. People might watch you. Um, so now when, when Vlad's talking about this lawsuit that absolutely goes the right way, right? It's like, yes, women should not be required to wear that. They should be required to wear athletic material for the sport, right? Just like the men are, right? That's equality, right? Whatever. That's that's fair. That makes common sense. Now, here's where if you try to argue it as a woke, you know, as a white male, right? Or anybody who just, any color, doesn't matter, right? Wants to talk about why do women wear that? And this is what I presented Vlad with on Twitter. I was like, do you know who created this you guys did the media created this the media is who tells the sheep what sexy looks like okay the media is who says this is what you know you're supposed to look like if you're a doll if you're if you're hot right this is what you're supposed to wear so i said vlad you guys are guilty you're the ones that did this now this goes hand in hand with another problem. If you make, you know, if women don't, the golf did this golf took away the skimpier clothes for women. The LPGA did, they made a ruling that said, you can't wear these short little skirts anymore. And you can't wear X amount of tank tops. And Michelle, we came out with like an article whether she's not barely wearing anything. She goes, why can't I wear whatever the hell I want? All right. So it's the, the exact opposite of what, the volleyball people are complaining about. And here's the issue with that. Because of the media, because of the way media portrays sex, these women, if you want to put on board shorts, guess where your sponsorship goes? Down. All right. There's marketers right now going, I agree with you, but you're not going to make any money wearing that. Because a lot of these athletes, they get picked up by Nike. They get picked up by Adidas. They get picked up by all these other people who are now selling all this shit to every high school in the fucking country, if not the planet, right? And you need guess who, sorry to say this, but, you know, the majority of wealth in this world is controlled by males, right? Like, who's going to pay for that? Well, there has to be, like, you were talking about basic economics. It's kind of like, you know, all right, let's let's since we're in the sports arena, female soccer players and male soccer players wear the same exact uniform. They play the same exact sport, although at a different caliber, right? But no, pro, it's pro caliber, yeah. But you know, yeah, right, yeah. well, it's pro caliber. The women's soccer or, team actually wins. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, well they win, Nunu, they, that's because we don't care about soccer in America unless you're a girl. Okay, we don't care if you're a man, you play football. Yeah, well, the uh, but the issue, right? The issue is if you don't bring in a certain amount of money, you can't. Well, like the car dealership, if the car dealership doesn't sell that used car for 
ten thousand dollars more than they paid for it, then they can't pay the salesman. They can't pay the, the receptionist. Underwriters. They, can't they can't pay, pay the, the electric bill. They can't pay. Well, I mean, they get a lot of that from service. It's, a, it's kind of a shitty analogy, but at the same time, you know, in order to support a soccer team, you have a lot of people in the background that also have to get paid. If you're not bringing in $20 million a game and all you're bringing in is $100,000 a game, you can't pay $20 million a game to each player. You know what I mean? Right. So, I, thing. I always handle the, when I troll on Facebook, cause I'm a Facebook terrorist. I, you know, I, it was, you it was, should not have said terrorist. On, yeah, you're gonna it, have to edit that. Now. As soon as, as yeah, the FBI is watching our show now. Um, well, I'm sure. I'm sure they were when the ATF agent came on our show. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that blew the whistle on the Fast and Furious. I'm sure that was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that got some views. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the women actually get paid more than the men do in percentages of the profit. Mm-hmm. right they just don't profit very much they just don't profit that much the issue. and yeah. a marketer not me not the big earl but a marketer would say try playing in underwear there are whole there are whole football teams of women that literally that just wear lingerie. lingerie and i'll tell yeah. you those women <laughs> as like, a fan way, i'll tell have you, you. Ever, have, <laughs> have you ever watched those games Brutal. Those women are ruthless. Yeah, they hit. Like, <laughs> oh my brutal. god! Like they aren't fucking, as we say in Alabama, fucking around. Like they are fucking just assholes and elbows knocking the dirt off of people. It's ridiculous. Like they're ruthless. Yeah. It's so better football than men's football. So here's the common sense problem with what we're talking about. And here's where the people who are advocating for this equal opportunity, equal stuff, aren't understanding common sense with what the way that the world of sports and marketing works. Okay. I am agreeing with the women that are filing this complaint with the IOC. You should not have to wear that. Okay. You should not have to. That's wrong. Now, once you make that change, we as, in, we as in the rest of the people watching should not have to listen to why you're getting paid less now. All right? right. Because you just lost a percentage of the people that were watching it, not for your volleyball skills. All right. Although they loved your volleyball skills, they probably did. They're probably like, oh, that was cool. Right. But that's not why they're watching. That's not that they're trying to attract more people to watch your sport. Now, the average that the, the, the person that loves sports is going to watch it no matter what you wear. OK, but to get more people to watch it. All right. You have to sell. You have to sell the league. That is why Michael Jordan well, I was always in the NBA finals. He was the league. That's who you sell. That's why he got every call. That's why LeBron with all of his flops, he gets every call because you need LeBron in the finals. Otherwise nobody's going to watch. What do you got? Buddy? Well, here's the other, here's the other problem though. You know, and, and you know, the analogy that we use is yeah, people are watching women's volleyball. There are some people, there's a demographic that's watching it because they are volleyball fans. Absolutely. Very attractive, very in shape women, right? But you yeah, can no, no, also you can say hi. the argument that on the men's side, people watch NASCAR not because they like people turning left. They want to see the damn accidents. They want to see somebody get hurt. They watch football because, like, how many people have stopped watching football because there are rules for safety of not players? Not many. Not many. It, but there's still some. There is yeah. a demographic. Yeah that watched it because they liked to watch massive hits and watch people get carted off. If that was a thing, then football in the fifties wouldn't have existed. Well, see, now I can, I can explain that to you deal. though, because the marketers for the NFL, which is, you know, one of the most you know productive organizations ever, right? The NFL makes so much money. It's stupid. Um, they realize that again, if you're missing Michael Jordan, if you're missing LeBron James, now go to the NFL. 
if you're missing Aaron Rodgers or if you're missing Patrick Mahomes, if you're missing Tom Brady, if you're missing these guys, the views go way down. So you got to yeah, protect them. Did, yeah, but they also did an analysis of, all right, if we make this rule, we're going to lose. You, you can't say that they didn't. Well, they did, the but I'm saying they, they actually they, they lose, retained more. Right? They retain right. more than they but, lost. But we're going to, but in the long run, because we have these star players, we're going to make more money. That's why that worked. And that's why they were like, yeah, we'll make the rules. The volleyball people are going to end up having to do the same analysis and be like, all right, if we make this rule or we change it to do, let's face it, the right thing and just right. like wear whatever. But there's a, there's a, there's always a difference between reality and what's right. And, and morals and morals and money rarely rarely come together. Right. If, if rarely, morals no. and money came together, car dealers, then, car dealers, you know, then, no, then there's the no porn industry, thing. like Pornhub, would be broke. You know what I mean? Um, they're not, <laughs> not at all. The uh, but that's the thing. They're that's one of their major marketing tools, and then to take that away. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine, and you're right, and you should be able to wear whatever you want to wear. You want to wear a fucking dress or a pair of pants? Wear a pair of pants. I don't give a shit. But uh, yep, you also have to know that there are consequences to the decisions that you're going to make, and if you can't deal with those consequences, well, then either don't make the decision or deal with the consequences once they come. That's just mm-hmm. also common sense. Right, and then. uh like I, you talked about the women's national team and I, I actually watch whenever a national team plays, I watch it cause I'm an American uh, regardless if I Ooh, like soccer or I not. Don't. So, and mm-hmm. I, but don't. It's, I also it's, don't watch. Uh, it's really uh, hard. Guys, it's it's really, I know it's just a personal opinion, right? It's the big girl's personal opinion. It's not common sense. Um, it might be to some, but it's really hard for me to watch a national team to where, you know, you're getting paid by the United States, right? To represent the United States. And you disrespect it. You hate it. You talk shit about it, right? You make this big stink about it. And so it's hard to watch those people because and then, and then they lost, you know, they lost to like Norway well, I keep saying Norway. Maybe I got a Norway fetish. I mean, my, my wife is from there originally. Um, but uh, the, yeah, like you don't sell. You're you're not sexy. So you're like, and again, we didn't create that. The media did. All right, the liberally controlled media could created what sexy is. So you're actually going off the rocker being, you know, dying your hair. We'll talk about a person. I won't mention him by name, like not a rapino or anything like that, but you know, you're going to dye your hair pink. You're going to throw the flag on the ground. You're going to take a knee, right? You're going to bitch about how unfair your 200 and fucking $50,000 a year is. Right. And then when we look at, we can pull up your records because it is public because you get paid, you know, the way you get paid of how much you donate. All right. Do you know how much money Donald Trump donated of his salary? All of it. All of it. 100%. All of it. Right? Oh, but he's a millionaire. Megan Rapino, you're a millionaire. Okay? You're a millionaire. And you donate like 1%. All right? You know how many poor people in the South donate more than that to their Baptist church? Lots of them. Yeah, 10%. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. In Alabama, yeah. we pay 10%. Yeah. And so, so uh, again, that's just the rules, the, the, com- the common sense of this, it, you have to, if, if you're going to be, if you're going to have common sense in this argument, in this discussion, you have to be willing to accept. All right. Like we talked about on the first show, accept the repercussions of what you think is right, whether it's right or not. And again, like I said, I agree with their case. I think that it should not be mandated that a woman should wear this X, right? Now, you also can't get mad if your salaries drop because you lose sponsors. And you're going to lose sponsors because of what the mainstream media has deemed as sexy, okay? And uh, there's plenty of women right now playing in other volleyball teams that have no problem with the amount of money they're making because they wear freaking Speedo freaking bikini bottoms, all right? They have zero problem with it. 
right? Well, I think it's basis. I think it's interesting to say. I, I saw a thing today just bringing this up, and, and it's it's kind of bothered me before, but um, I think it's funny. Like you go on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And like today, there was this. Uh, I was just scrolling through, and uh, there's a this this woman in a Catholic schoolgirl outfit, super tight top, low cleavage, like. I would turn it off right away. Read the Bible. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. Uh, but she's like, <laughs> when you were sexualized as a kid, and blah blah blah. She's like going on this, like, like making a point that she was sexualized, and then she feel like she's getting fucked, and it's like, well, but now you're sexualizing yourself as clickbait on Instagram, so you can get likes or views, or you, and and apparently this woman also has a OnlyFans account. OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so like, so you're fine with sexualization as long as you are getting profit. Well, like, that's what you're doing. You're just said there's a third or fourth person that's doing the controlling what outfit you wear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, again, if you're if you're part of the woke culture and you're listening, uh, and you're still listening, I applaud you because that means you've actually opened up a little bit to listen to both sides. And we're not, or you're just taking, or you're just taking notes for yeah, when or, you yeah. go to, to work tomorrow. Or argument like, oh on my Fox God. News or CNN. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, is none of us are watching Fox News or CNN with our talking points. Our talking points are straight from what we just freaking see going on, right? And like and Buddy's saying, Fox, like yeah, but what Buddy's yeah. saying is where the woke will attack you right away, right? And they'll be like, "Well, what do you know about it? You're a guy. That's one. All right, that's the first thing they'll say, and then, yeah. and then." Two, they won't listen. Now they've already, their bias is already picked up and they won't listen to the fact that because of the liberally controlled media, which we talked about earlier, controlling what sexy is, this person is trying to profit off of what sexy is. And at the same time, mad that the system is about sex. Right. And it, it literally, that's again, we need somebody to come on here to be like, how do you expect to make money if you don't sell something? And, right? and, and sell. to be honest, your 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 uh, demographic for people who like volleyball, whether it be beach or whatever, is every four years when the Olympics pops up. You know what I mean? Like, or when it's on in a sports bar and they're just kind of watching it. But like, I don't know very many people that. Oh my and, god! And then, and then we could we really could probably hot, sa- we could probably save this for and watch the weekend. volleyball game. It's going to be on in fifteen minutes. Guys, yeah, unless gonna, you live in Hawaii gonna, or Brazil, like nobody cares. Guys, nobody talks like that. A, uh, there's a giant volleyball pay per view on this weekend. You guys want to come over and watch it? Like people barbecue and shit. No. Yeah. yeah, and again, but again, fuck yeah, volleyball. Yeah, why do people watch the UFC? <laughs> you know, as opposed to sexualization to tip to fucking kill each other you know what i mean and it's fine for that like nobody's bitching about that but because well the women actually the wear more clothes side. in ufc than the men do true yeah so, yeah. And, yeah and <laughs> but yeah uh, it, it's tough and we could say it for another show but we can talk about why there's a male and a female on this planet right that's another thing that nobody ever wants to discuss of what the reality of that is. Well, uh, you know, so let's talk about the common sense part of that. Right. That's what the, I'm saying. Uh, like the, for, the actual common and, sense. Yeah. But for years and years and years, there have been standards that males have. Now it's toxic masculinity because you're, you have the, the audacity to open a car door or a door for somebody because, or walk on the inside because, of the road. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Because they think it's, well, or because you're told it's, well, I can open my own door. You're right. You can. You can also have babies. And because of the fact that you are the person that's going to bring on the next generation, I should show you some fucking respect and open right. your goddamn door for you and walk on the inside. So if somebody gets hit by a car, it's me and not you because yeah. I can't fucking make the next generation. But for, for years and years and years, we've looked at these masculine qualities that are fucking held by men as great being strong being fast being smart doing all this other stuff and then and then women felt what well, seems that women felt like 
their positive qualities weren't seen as you know in as good a light as those male qualities so of course let's just move over and we'll 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 try to be faster and stronger and all this other stuff and we could do everything a man can do you're right you can do the things that a man can do biologically and physiologically you're probably going to do them at a lower level you're definitely going to do them at a lower level if an equally like an equal man if everything's equal you know, that's why they have the crossfit female games and the crossfit male games and they're nowhere near the weight the length the feet the speed you know what i mean but the the problem is that instead of just making sure that we celebrated those positive female traits like being a nurturer being the mother of the entire fucking world um taking care of people being there as a an advocate for their partner or an advocate for their kids or whatever instead we've just tried to like well i'll just i'll be a guy now and then we don't understand why everybody's so goddamn confused like when when i see people of like the generation below us talk about how they're going to start a revolution but you can't even you can't even figure out what gender you're going to be today how are you going to start a revolution you can't even come up into a consensus of what pronoun you want you 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 want a pronoun that's plural for a singular person that's not how fucking english works that's not how any language works right like in fact other languages have 17 different ways to talk to somebody based on what their sex is what their age is like all that stuff like yeah yeah yeah. but they're not but they're not they're, they're by age title and position in society not by what they have decided for themselves that they are it's what society has decided they are and all of those are meant to clarify communication so if i'm talking about somebody in the plural and it's only a singular person that doesn't really do well for communication the point of communication is to get a point across not to make somebody feel good yeah nunu what does it make sense to you you're the guest on this show you've talked very little because we kind of you know we just we masculined you and we we dominated you uh yeah so I, I what, like a democrat right now yeah yeah just sit on <laughs> shut up right like uh so no what, what does it make sense to you let's see if we can cover a topic that nunu doesn't understand or doesn't understand why somebody else says that this is the way things should be well the whole I mean, I can throw in my two cents on that whole uh, gender thing. How people are now so offended when you, I don't know, don't call them by the right pronoun. Well, I'm fucking offended that for the past, I don't know how many thousands of years have been two genders. And now you're going to throw in 15. Well, there's more than 15, by the way. You're, uh, you, I know, you, I know you it's like the entire book. letter of the, it's like the infinity, entire alphabet uh, now. <laughs> infinity gender, genders now. You know, and, and that's the thing. Most people don't have a problem. Like if you wear a dress and you're a dude, I don't give a fuck. I'll call you a yeah, chick. Like, that's fine. I'll be like, hey, what's up, ma'am? Like, not a big that's deal. That's the badass dude that came from, Scot- where is it, Scotland? It's got the Scottish yeah. guys wear Kilt. Yeah, yeah we, we got the Celtic warrior. We got Travers. Yeah. Celtic, yeah. <laughs> but, if, uh, but but if you're yeah, and if you're a, a a girl and you're wearing like you got short hair and like wearing a, a freaking men's clothes and then I'll be like, all right, sir, whatever. If that's kind of what I think. But to be in a dress as a woman and then get pissed off because somebody didn't call you them because at any moment you could switch yeah you could switch genders and that's fine do whatever you want but at any time you're only a person you're still just one gender at a time you're not both male and female at the same exact time even people with split personalities only got one fucking personality at a time yeah and then the one thing that i'm looking at this book that i have on my desk uh here you go uh that I read moons ago, right? It's the, it's the crucible of power, right? Um, and it talks about people in the history who shaped, you know, modern day capitalism and the power that they had. And JP Morgan is quoted in this book multiple times, like the actual JP Morgan. 
And he talks about the entry into World War I when he's talking to the Secretary of State, when he's like, why aren't we in this war yet? And Secretary of State, I think it was Byrnes, Burns, B-Y-R-N-E-S, was like, well, Woodrow Wilson declared neutral. He goes, the fuck he did. He's like, he allowed us to invest in this war and all the money's on the British side. And he's like, money controls everything. That's what he said to the Secretary of State. And then a couple of weeks later, boom, we're in the war, right? So it's like, there are people who are in power, all right? And yes, the woke right, I mean, excuse me, the woke left is accurate when they say that most of the money in America is controlled by white males, right? That's a fact. But the global power in money is not controlled by white males, but it's still males, right? So you mean, uh, are you, are you by chance talking about crazy rich Asians? Crazy rich Asians and then crazy rich and Saudis, or, right? Like Saudi, or, Saudi yeah. Arabians yeah. or, and or people in Abu Dhabi. not even talk about the Jews. Yeah, it was about the Jews. Yeah, let's careful with them. Um, <laughs> but the, the point of that is, is that as money does control everything, and the, when, if you want a real revolution, you have to stop supporting the, that institution. All right? That institution is the women's national soccer team. If you want to play for the women's national soccer team, then you are now playing for the man. You are playing for them and they're paying you to do it. Start your own freaking league, right? Try capitalism. Try it, right? Stop trying to force socialism down everybody's throat and that everybody needs to accept you because guess what? The media is never going to allow everyone to accept you because as soon as your segment's done, the next commercial is going to be a Victoria's Secrets model in a fucking bikini, right? And it's going to be hot. And it's going to be hot, right? Right? That that's that's literally what they're selling you. All right. So again, I'm willing to listen to your gripes. I'm and I, I would love for some somebody to come on here and explain why sex shouldn't sell, right? Because I, I I can agree with why we shouldn't objectify anybody. I can agree with that point, but I want you to tell me why it shouldn't sell and what your plan is to stop it. Okay. Cause that's, that's what I would look at. And I always say this to my daughters. I have two daughters and I go when they're like the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders come, you know, marching on in the field. I go, you can make an argument that there is absolutely no need for them. Like, no actual NFL fan watches the Dallas Cowboys because of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Okay. No NFL fan watches them because of that. Right. But why are they still there? Okay. Why, why? Cause there's a market for it. That's why. Right. So you get rid of the market. How are you going to get rid of the market? Start your own. That's literally capitalism. Start your own market that defeats another market. That's how you, that, that's how you beat people or in the same market, start a different brand. Okay. Um, but that being said, I just want to touch quick touch on Aaron Rodgers because this, it gets me triggered. Why do you want to touch Aaron Rodgers? Touch because he's, he's, he's not, he's not even some object. Yeah, Just he's, because he's a sexy football player. He's not even he's sexy. You, you see it. Tom, Tom Brady's like, go. Tom Brady's like six years older than him, and look at how much nicer he looks than Aaron Rodgers. Aaron okay, Rodgers is like first a hippie. Of all, first of all, like that you're you're comparing like Saint Jude to Jesus Christ. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a saint and all, but he ain't Jesus. You know what I mean? Tom Tom Brady, <laughs> Jesus. Tom Brady is way better looking than Jesus was. Um, but oh. so yeah. Uh, you're going to hell yeah well tom brady tom brady's going to hell too they can't let that guy in heaven because he'll probably take over god's position too um that's just a question tom brady is god tom brady is god um so here you have it here you had what we talked about last week personified okay with the actions of the media with aaron Rodgers. it is hilarious to me i was watching uh 
it's not first take um, around the horn. Okay. It's an ESPN show where you get points for saying things. Now they had women and men on this show. And there was one woman that had about three chins. All right. And I'm going to judge her because she had three chins and she's talking about the medical decisions of a professional athlete. All right. I am going to side with the professional athlete on their advice on health over your triple chinned ass any day of the week. All right. That's just co it's common sense. So you two are talking about, let's just say you guys are talking about Tennessee. Which one am I going to listen to? Has good health insurance and can talk to actual doctors. Well, that's what I he talked to. He, yeah. Well, he did an interview about it and he was like, yeah. my health team decided that me catching COVID and recovering from it based off of my diet and my immunization plan, not vaccination mm -hmm. plan, immunization plan was healthier for me than a vaccine that I'm actually allergic to two of them. And he's like, so that's why. But again, why is he answering that? And so when you have this triple chin lady and talking about how narcissistic Aaron Rodgers is, and remember how he's talking about on the show, buddy, about narcissism, how that word is always thrown out. And the chances oh, yeah. are, if you're calling somebody a narcissist, chances are you're a narcissist. Okay. Well, either you're a narcissist yes. or you yes. want to shut down their argument. Right. right. Because you yeah. are it's a narcissist. Like the, well, you're a man. You don't get to have an opinion. Or right. you're a woman. You get to have an opinion. Right. So, okay. If so they were on this show, if they were on this cool. show, we'd say, all right, stop right there. I would stop them. I'd cut them off. Yeah. And I'd be like, at what point in time is any of Aaron Rodgers' medical anything your business at what point in time does it become your business the only time it becomes your business uh, is when he tests positive business. if he tests positive and you were within six feet of him for more than 15 minutes right while he's coughing not even way. not even but even still there's very few people that fit that criteria okay those are the only people that deserve to know what his status is and here's the other thing. You know, Say it slow. If he was vaccinated, he would have still missed last Sunday's game. Because even question. when you're vaccinated, you can still get it. Still get it. Yeah. <laughs> they like, they can question. still spread it. I got a question for you. What other back where's the what common sense virus? of that? What other virus do other people think that you should like? You know, at one point with AIDS, everybody thought that like everybody should. It was only gay people got AIDS. AIDS. But now, but now, if if you Maybe have AIDS not. and somebody and somebody's like, you should have said that you had AIDS before you like to, went to my bathroom. Now I might get it. You know what I mean? Like they're ignorant as fuck as to what the disease or the virus does. And like, and they want to like it's none of your business if somebody has AIDS unless. You're going to have intercourse with them, right? Or or a blood transfusion, blood blood with them. Yeah. And other than that, it doesn't You're affect you. So, yeah. so exactly. So then, it, it's unless it, they've been chewing on razors, it doesn't matter then either. Here's what violates the fifth principle of patrolling. All right, the, when Magic Johnson came out and talked about Kyrie Irving having to get vaccinated to play basketball, it's like. The NBA lets you play basketball with AIDS. With AIDS. Yeah. With, with fucking a AIDS. Sport where people bleed all the time. And when other people said something about you bleeding and that being. And an issue you for think them, that you think that Kyrie Irving is selfish because he doesn't want to vaccinate his extremely athletic body for something that won't kill him? Like, yeah, or even, yeah, affect him. Probably, okay. yeah, probably won't even become symptomatic because he's, as Aaron Rodgers would put it, immunized. Right. And. Right. Why is Aaron Rodgers immunized? One, he's in shape. Okay. That's the, that's the first and foremost, best common sense message. Number two, he has dietitians. He makes like a hundred million dollars a year. Okay. With sponsors. He doesn't even like, he just tells people what he likes to eat. And then those people make it super fucking healthy for him. Okay. Like, and then he's got doctors that say, 
hey, your blood pressure during the third quarter spiked to here. If you eat this on Saturday, that should keep your blood pressure to here. Mm -hmm. We don't have that luxury, okay? He does. So when he decides that he doesn't want something, um, yeah. Very smart people probably told him not to. Very smart people probably told him not to. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, and they probably uh, the weren't chick with three chins ain't one of them. The, yeah, the chick with right. the three chins writing for the Boston Herald or whatever is not one of them. All right. So again, if you're demanding, if you're demanding that somebody shares a health decision with you for your own safety, you're a narcissist. All right. You're a fucking narcissist. Like, I'm scared. My health might be in jeopardy. You better tell me. At what point in time were you ever concerned about that other person? All right. At what other point in time were you like, hey, Aaron, how are you feeling today? Are you symptomatic of COVID? Are you getting are are you are you feeling okay? Did that question ever come out of your mouth? Or was it how come you weren't fucking vaccinated? Right? Like, how about hey, how you doing, bro? Like, I'm concerned about you. You feeling okay? No, yeah, I'm healthy. I'm good. Just like I thought. COVID didn't really fuck with me. Just like it didn't fuck with a billion other people that got it. Right, like no common sense. So the thing, that, the thing that doesn't make sense to me in this whole like argument is why are all these athletes coming out and saying like, yeah, I got vaccinated because I made a conscious decision of blah, blah, whatever, blah 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 blah. It's like, all right, dude, like I get it. Like you've got your fifteen minutes on stage. Um, I don't care what you feel is healthy or not healthy for you just go out there and play the fucking game. It's like the same thing with all these athletes who want to sit there and take a knee and do all this political bullshit. It's like, where are you in the off season when you don't have cameras? On? I, uh, what are I you made doing? that argument at one point when, uh, when we were having the whole kneeling thing. And, and to me personally, um, like the kneeling thing is, if I don't like it. I just won't watch the game, right? I don't have to watch the game That's and, right. I, and then I just... we'll get my money. That's what I did. But the thing that really fucking bugged me about the whole thing is it was about police brutality and this, that, the other. It's like, okay, well, Shaquille O'Neal is a volunteer sheriff. Do you think that police are pulling over black dudes and beating the shit out of them when Shaq is sitting next to him? Probably, Probably not. not. Well, that, that's You're why the actual... Probably the one beating the shit out of them. Major market with major cities with major police brutality problems. You got an off-season? Go ride along. You think they're going to do it? with do ride-alongs. It, it, yeah, you could do ride-alongs. In fact, they would love for you to do a ride-along because you're famous. So we so, bring on... We've had Bookham on our show. You met Bookham, buddy. You know, he's yeah. a cop in New Jersey. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and he talks about how he can't stand when cops don't become part of the community, right? Mm -hmm. To where when you show up, you should be de-escalating situations, right? So people should see you and be like, that's book him right there. Like he's legit, chill out, right? He's going to come here and like restore order, like whatever, you know, and yada, yada. So that goes hand in hand with your point to where, like I always tell people, I go, what are you going to do about it? Right. So yeah. we don't like veteran suicide. Obviously, nobody really likes it. And, you know, we can do 22 push ups a day, or we can build a community that might actually help save some people's lives. Like, we're, we're going we're gonna to do something about it. Right. And I don't have the answer to stop veteran suicide. But if I get enough freaking people to join the community, somebody's going to have the answer. Now, if you come at me with, something that I can answer, then I'm going to answer it. Right. And it's, we have all those, the diversity of things. Right. And like buddy's saying, you're an athlete. You make lots of money. All right. You have an off season. What are you doing? Right. And there are people like uh, there are athletes that do that. And uh, I Mm -hmm. forget the two guys from the Seahawks, um, but you know, they, they took knees. And they also were starters. They weren't like Colin Kaepernick who got benched and then decided to start taking a knee, right? Like they were starters. They took knees. Uh, gosh, well, I can't remember their names. Um, but they they literally donated some of their salary. That's one, but that's just money. 
but then they worked with the, the local politicians in the off season, right? And they said, hey, I'll sponsor this program if you implement it. Like, mm-hmm. I'll give you the money to hire 150 more people from those two blocks to police those two blocks, right? Like, they made a difference. They did something. They were leaders. The rest of you all just mm-hmm. biatches. Yeah. Well, that's the, and that's the, that's the point though, that all comes down to common sense leadership and not just doing what everybody else is doing to make a point so that you can get clicks and likes and be in the news for a little bit. Right. And again, yeah. being a narcissist, caring about yourself. All right. The person, and it sucks that we're on a podcast saying this about being like the loudest one is usually the one that cares most about themselves. And uh, I've had to hear that a lot because I'm a loud person. Um, you know, no. and yeah, a little bit, slightly, no. slightly, no. slightly. No. Um, and again, but then when people get to actually know me, right, it's like, yeah, he'll then they he'll, know that you're a narcissist, right? What? Right. Um, and then they realize that, oh, this dude actually he he came over and helped me, yeah, you asked me to, right? And they're like, why wouldn't I help you? Okay. And again, I, there, there's where you can't just put people into one department and then this department and that department to where it's, if I'm making a loud noise about a, a veteran site, which I am right now, veteran trash talk, I'm making a really loud noise about it. We're doing podcasts about it. All right. A couple hundred, maybe even a thousand people listen to this episode. And it's like, Yeah we did something about it. I'm not just barking up here, right? We did something. So you can take your narcissist stuff and shove it up your ass because I literally don't care what you think about how I talk. I'm actually trying to do something. If I'm doing it wrong, then tell me. But just don't tell me why you don't like us. Like, like, tell us what would you do differently? Why aren't you doing it? Why haven't you got off your ass? That's right. Keep being, what do we say, Nunu? Basic, right? I think you brought that into RTB. You're basic, right? You're being a basic Basic bitch. bitch. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like, and no matter how much woke shit you want to bring in, the world is always going to be run by somebody, right? It just is. Now, you can either get all triggered, right? You can get all triggered by the people who are running things. You could ignore them. That's a way. And that actually bothers those people more when you just ignore them. Right. And, or you can try to beat them or you can sit there and bitch about them. All right. If you sit there and bitch about them, guess who's going to win the guy, not bitching, right. The guy that's just, okay, whatever. Like, so <laughs> yeah, you, you, you hate that. I sell sex. Okay. Like, yeah. Awesome. But uh, hey, uh, do we have anything else that we want to chat about? No, no, no. What you were going to say something? No, I I said I still have more money than you. The guy with the marketing. Right, right, yeah, hundred percent, buddy. You got any last words? Yeah. Um, no, no. Like so we covered a, we covered a lot of nothing tonight, and uh, that's fine uh, because. When you watch the news, a lot of it is nothing, nothing. Uh, now, when you try this next time you go into a car dealership, all right, you go in there and you say, hey, I'm doing a trade-in. And I want to know what your trade value is, right? And Nunu, our guest, has already explained that that won't work, okay? So, and, and he brought the common sense to it. And with still no common sense, he it, just it, said that it just you're not just not gonna get it. it no, he said they sense. gave you the it trade in, it, they sense. already gave the other person the trade in value. Yeah, but we're now trading the retail value against I don't the, want the retail value. It's not it doesn't make it retail just because like if I went to that dude, you know what? It's over. I, it doesn't even no, it, it, it makes matter. sense, buddy. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so yeah, we need we need somebody we need somebody else to come like on the show and make. <sighs> <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's it's not I'm like you're giving it to the dealership so that they can drive it, buddy. They're not going mean, to drive it. They don't want to drive it. Like there's you're... a reason the used car dealer, the, the used car and service department in every dealership is the thing that makes the money for said dealership. They're not making money off your eighty thousand dollar Dodge truck. They only get a little bit for that. Everything All else right. goes to Dodge. All right. So there you have it, trash talk fans. And those of you wondering what common sense is, if you listen like to this man. whole if you listen to this whole thing, train. which I doubt you did, unless you're driving in like New York or LA and it took you two hours to get to work. Um, Southern California. Yeah. Southern California nightmare traffic. Uh, but Hey, we appreciate you. If, if any of you guys have a common sense issue, uh, go on better trash talk.com. Our email addresses are on there. Uh, email us a common sense issue you'd want to discuss and we'll do it. Other than that, we will catch you guys next month.